What is up, people? Van from the Vanderous Gaming Channel here, bringing another Salasta build video. Today's video, we are going to show you how to build a Court Mage Wizard build. Now, this isn't my one of those funky build ideas. This is just straight up one of the strongest, if not the strongest, wizard build or subclass build in Salasta Crown of the Magister. And so let's get into how you build this guy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Palace of Ice where you start at level 10 and just kind of give you an idea of what a level 10 version of this looks like and how gear will uh, add or subtract from this build. So first up, you have to choose your ancestry. Really, there's three options, a gnome, a high elf, or a snow dwarf. If we're going point by and that type of thing, I recommend the gnome solely because they get plus two to the intelligence. Rock gnome or shadow gnome doesn't really matter. Rock gnome gets plus one constitution. Shadow gnome gets plus one dexterity. It probably makes the most sense to go rock gnome because you don't need a ton of dexterity, but you probably do want a couple more hit points. That's why this is the best option. You could go high elf, but they only get one to their intelligence and two to dexterity. And you could even argue snow dwarf solely because of their resistances to some things, their constitution saving throw. But ultimately, rock gnome is going to be our best choice. Now we're going to lean into wizard like we talked about. And here's the key that is going to add to this build and make it so strong is the cell sword, right? In Salasta Crown of Magister, there's a background that gives you proficiency in medium armor. This is completely broken because pretty much any class that cannot wear medium armor can now wear medium armor. So with a wizard that can wear medium armor and with the court mage, you're going to see how this is going to make this build so strong. So we're going to go cell sword to give us the ability to use medium armor. Now, as some of my other build videos early on, people said I min-max too much and that it wasn't fair and the ability scores were so high, it's going to make everything easy. So we're going to go point by just to keep it more in line with normal builds, like people who don't want to play a video game and build like what a video game should be. So we're going to go 14 dex, 16 con, 17 intel, and I'm going to put the other two in strength. All right, we're a wizard, so probably Arcana, maybe Investigation, don't care, and let's move on to the next one. All right, so cantrips, it's kind of whatever you want. My go-to cantrip is always going to be Firebolt, just for the damage. Ray of Frost doesn't hurt, and usually a light spell, depending on um, what other ancestries you have in your, in your uh, you know, repertoire, so to speak. Dazzle's great because it prevents um, reactions against you if you try and move away. Shocking Grasp is one of the only ones that's actually a melee hit where like Chill Touch sounds like it should be melee, but it's actually ranged. So whatever you think makes the most sense. Spell-wise, I've said this many, many times, I always pick up my uh, Detect Magic and my um, Identify on my wizard just because they can do it for free as a, what this little book means, as a ritual. So it just makes it simple. Uh, everything else, you know, Shield is required for this build 100%. Magic Missile's great, and then Mage Armor is a good choice up until you get your AC or you can get some good uh, armor, but I would recommend doing something different, maybe, you know, Grease, Hideous Laughter, really whatever floats your boat, it doesn't matter. All right, so we're going to just give ourselves a name, Albo, and we're going to now show you how to get Albo up to level 16. So level 2 is where we're going to get our Arcane Tradition, and this is where we're going to pick the Court Mage. Now, the Court Mage, what makes them so powerful is they get proficiency with shields and they gain the protection fighting style. Don't use the protection fighting style because you have to use a reaction for it and you want to save your reaction for your shield spell. The other thing that makes a Court Mage so powerful is this spell shield. As an action, you can put a shield on one other creature and yourself. So one of your allies and you, within six cells, get a shield equal to four temporary hit points per your level for one entire hour. Now, it seems weird, but it's twice your your level in, in temporary hit points. So at level one, you're gonna get eight temporary hit points. I'm sorry, at level one, you're going to get four temporary hit points, four times your level, right? At level 10, you're getting 40. At level 16, when the game is done, you're getting what, 70, 70 some, I don't know, my math is terrible. But ultimately, you are granting yourself and one other ally anywhere from 4 to like 70 temporary hit points. And you can do this twice before a long rest. And then when you get higher up, you can do two allies. So three of your four party members, you can grant them a temporary shield that is just mind-boggling overpowered. But that's why we're doing this, because we want an overpowered build. 
Pick up whatever you didn't pick up before. Doesn't matter. Tickles your fancy. None of these are required for the build other than the shield spell. So now we're going to level three. Nothing real big here. We get our level two spells. Whatever you really want. This is 100% up to you. I like to take knock because I always have a guy who can't open a chest. And I need to open up my chests. And I need to find out what's behind everything. So knock's just a guarantee. Yep, I'm totally going to unlock this. Misty Step's good, but you're pretty tanky, so you don't really have to move away from anything. So kind of whatever you want, I think I'm going to go with uh, Scorching Ray. All right, we're getting to level four, so we're getting to our um, ability score increase or our feat. I highly recommend the first feat that you're going to take is either going to be Flawless Concentration or you're going to take the um, uh, Potent or Powerful Cantrip. You don't do a ton of concentration spells at this level, but you will start doing it further on before you get to the level eight where you can do this again. So flawless concentration is what I would highly suggest. The other option is if you don't want to go for flawless concentration, um, I do believe, you know, powerful cantrip does give you the ability to still do damage with your cantrip. So if you're going to be conserving your spells, Otherwise, what makes the most sense, in my opinion, is most likely to do an uh, ability score increase. But we're going to go flawless because being able to maintain concentration easily just makes sense. Now, you can choose another class cantrip. Doesn't matter to me. And then you can pick a spell you didn't pick before. So we'll grab shatter, maybe a whole person, and we'll move on. All right, level five is a good level for a wizard. This is when everybody gets so excited because you get your fireball spell. So these are the spells you can choose from. Counterspell to me is a requirement, especially as a court mage. That's also what makes them super strong is they start to get a bunch of bonuses and benefits to their counterspell. This is a required spell, kind of like shield. After that, really up to you what you want to do. You're going to be able to pick up more spells later down the road. I re recommend fly. Um, putting fly on everyone is just great. You can get around the map. Haste is good unless you take damage and end your concentration. But because we have Flawless Concentration, Haste could be a good idea as well to maintain that. And then, of course, there's always the go-to Fireball or Lightning Bolt. So we're going to pick Haste. That's fine. All right, we're getting to level 6. So this is what I was telling you about the Court Mage. You gain advantage on your spell casting checks when casting Counterspell against level 4 or higher spells. And additionally, enemies have disadvantage on their spell casting checks when casting Counterspells against you. So basically... When you are trying to counter a higher level spell, you have to make a saving throw. This just gives you advantage on that. And then certain spells, they need to have to roll against you, and they have disadvantage. So it just makes you more easy to counter spells, and then more unlikely to not be able to counter yours. So now that we didn't pick up, we'll do maybe fly, maybe a fireball, whatever we want. Level 7, not much, just some more spells here. We're breaking into the good stuff. So greater invisibility is always fun. Wall of fire, blight, banishment, just depend. We'll go greater invisibility, wall of fire. And we're going to get to another ability score increase. So at this point, you could start leaning into your intelligence. And you could also pick up the powerful cantrip. I'm just going to lean into my intelligence and we're going to just take it straight up to 19. And then what I might end up doing is take my con up one. No. Should I take this to 18 and my con to 17? It really doesn't matter on this, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we definitely want to get to 18 here because we're going to want to get to 20 soon. But I don't know. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just take this all the way up and call it a day. And then class spells, just kind of whatever you want here. Uh, let's do banishment and, I don't know, blight. And then we're going to get to level 9. Nothing crazy level 9, just more spells. Fourth level spells are coming. So Mind Twist used to be a broken spell that was absolutely unstoppable, but now they change it to say all creatures around you will be taking damage and incapacitated. So pretty much every single person in your party, as well as the monsters, will be incapacitated and take damage if they fail an in saving throw. So this went from being the best spell to in the game to a very situational spell. Dominate Person is absolutely insanely fun, and I'm going to take that. The Conjure Elemental is great. Putting an Elemental on the field to suck up damage is just amazing. Unless they somehow get mad at you and you lose concentration and then they want to fight you. That's a problem. Hold Monster is just a better hold person. And then Cone of Cold is just a really big cold damage. Um, I would probably pick Conjure Elemental. Alright, we're getting to level 10 here. 
This is where we're going to get our improved spell shield. So creatures under the effect of your spell shield now also gain advantage on saving throws against spells and magical effects. So now every time someone has the spell shield on, if someone casts a spell against them, they have advantage on it. Good stuff. All right, so then we'll get back here. Let's pick up the mo hold monster in Cone of Cold, and then we'll go to level 11. So this is where we're going to get to the next level of spells, I do believe. Yep, so here... I will recommend, so Chain of Light, Chain Lightning's okay, it hits multiple targets. Freezing Spear hits a ton of targets at a very huge range. I never liked Circle of Death. Disintegrate, I always seem to fail because of con saving throw and they always seem to pass it. Um, so what I would recommend is Sunbeam. Sunbeam's great because not only does it do damage, it's radiant damage. It provides a light source and you can continue to use your action over and over to cast it. So ultimately, you're going to cast a some kind of, you know, big damage spells. You can keep this going and still cast big damage spells and choose between throwing your damage spells and hitting them with a sunbeam. It's just a really great spell. And it's also great for managing your spell slots where you can just continuously do this over and over again. That's why I highly recommend sunbeam. And then other than that, really up to you, chain lightning, whatever, frozen sphere, we can move on. Level 12. All right, so now we're back to another ability score increase, or we can do the, the powerful cantrip. At this point, your cantrips, I think, are doing 3d8. So even taking half damage versus no damage would make sense. So this is probably a good opportunity to go forward with your powerful cantrip. Uh, Spell-wise, you can pick up the spells you didn't get before. So maybe a chain lightning, maybe a uh, eye bite, and then we'll move on. Level 13. All right. We're just getting to our higher level spells again. So we only get one six, one seventh, and one eighth level spell that we can use before a long rest. And the seventh level spell, Delayed Fireball's okay. It's not great. Arcane Sword I really didn't like. I don't think it's any better than like a Conjure Elemental so or a Sunbeam, so I just don't it's not worth a seventh level spot. Prismatic Spray is amazing. Gravity Slam's amazing because this does damage and puts them on the ground. So I would probably pick Gravity Slam and Prismatic Spray. Now you will see that I can't keep continuing because I don't have a spell book big enough to hold these spells. So just to kind of get through this, I am going to actually choose level one spells just so I can uh, move forward with the build. So just keep that in mind when, when you join the Palace of Ice DLC and you start leveling up, just make sure you have multiple spell books on you. Now we're getting to level 14 and you can see this is where you can expand. Now you can create a spell shield around you, an extra ally and you can now cast the spell shield on ally 12 cells. So the range has doubled on how far away you can put a shield on somebody, and you can now put it on two people plus yourself. So this is where three of the four people are going to have a damage shield. You are level 14, so that is going to be equivalent to, what, 56? 56 points of temporary hit points? It's insane. So 56 times 3 is how much damage you're absorbing on your entire party. All right. So now we can choose another spell. We can pick finger, death, symbol, whatever. And, oh, I forgot. We can't do that because we're trying to level up. So we'll pick more level one spells. I would have picked the two that I told you, symbol and uh, finger, death. Okay, level 15. We're almost there. This is where we're going to get our eighth level spell. Our choices are these right here. Sunburst is great. Brilliant sunlight blaze that does some damage. Pretty cool. You have Thunderstorm, a nice fun little spell that does some AoE damage. Maze, it pretty much just takes something out of the fight forever. Power Word Stun, you literally can stun anything that has less than 150 hit points. And then all of this. Spell Word to me is going to be your best choice. Creates a mobile globe that is impenetrable by spells. So ultimately, you just put this over your whole party and all those nasty spells coming in won't do anything. They literally have to be inside of the, of the spell circle in order to cast spells on you. So that gets them close so all your melee can do damage. So I would pick Spell Ward and then most likely Dominate Monster. You know how I feel about Dominate Person. This is great. Feeble Mind is actually really strong too. And then maybe a big Sunburst, that kind of thing. All right. But as we said, we got to pick level one spells so we can finish up the build. All right. So level 16, we're going to get our final. We're going to do our ability score increase. We'll get ourselves a uh, 20 AC. And then we can always do our 20 intel, and we can always do something here. does not matter. Eh, let's just give some more constitution. Why not? And we'll auto this, and then we will uh, finish out. 
So ultimately, the build kind of comes to fruition in about level six. By about level six, you're pretty much as strong as you're going to get. And then at level 14, you finally get that, that extra spell shield. But at this point, I'm going to show you how your gear also contributes and how as a wizard, you're going to be able to absorb lots of damage, do lots of damage, and still have a very, very high armor class. So let's go and kind of show you that here right now. Okay, so I've actually played this, like I said, the uh, Court Mage Wizard is one of my favorites. So I actually have a level 16 Court Mage Wizard. And I just want to kind of show you how, with this build plus the gear, how potent this is. So if we're going to look in here, you can see that my current primary is to have a shield right now. This is a plus 3 AC shield. So it's plus 2, and then you also get it from the, um, from the actual armor here. So you can see, just using the shield, I have a 25 armor class. I'm wearing half plate because of my cell sword ability. And then it's half plate plus one. I get my dexterity plus two. I get my plus five from my shield. And then I also have this ring that gives me plus two. But ultimately, even if you took the ring off, even if you took off this crazy shield, and you just did a normal shield and half plate, you'd still be at a 20 armor class, okay? Now, we're not talking about even when you put the shield spell on. So then anytime I use my reaction, I can give myself a five armor class so I can get to a 25 AC with just a basic shield and some half plate or 24 AC. So instantaneously, I can change taking damage to not taking damage with that. Now with all of this other good stuff on here, I could get to a 30 armor class when I'm shielded with my shield spell, which just makes this super, super strong. So on top of that, if I want to, I can also use my sp my ability, and I can cast Spell Shield. So I'm just going to cast it on myself just for fun. And then you can see I can now, right here, improve Spell Shield. Creatures under this Spell Shield also gain advantage against saving throws. And you can see I just gave myself 64 hit points. So this is what's amazing by this. 64 additional hit points on top of what I have already. It's just something that is amazing on how you can say, okay... I'm now going to have 130 hit points plus 64. And oh, by the way, I can put those 64 hit points on up to three people in my party because I can cast it up to two allies plus myself. So ultimately, the best part about this build is the ability to wear medium armor, the ability to use a shield to get an extremely high AC, then use a shield spell to prevent us, and then have flawless concentration to continue to hold concentration while we also dish out the damage and shield our team members. And so that is why this is one of the strongest builds. To have a wizard with a 25, 26, whatever it is, 30 AC, be able to do the damage they can, and then apply an additional damage shield to, to up to three characters twice before a long rest is just something that's pretty, pretty broken in the game and will pretty much make any party that you're running really really strong especially against that one enemy that just does ridiculous aoe damage like a dragon or something like that so hope you, hopefully you guys like this video if you did like it you can go ahead and put a like if you want to have any questions or any comments please put them in the comments below and as always thank you for watching van from the vanvers gaming channel cheers and peace out